All right, today's video is on run strength and run strength that most runners are not doing that should be doing. And I'm gonna to try to come across in a way that is not sounding controversial for the point of sounding controversial. Um, this is just to open your mind and give some thought as to maybe how this relates to you specifically and maybe again open your mind to some new things that you can do while you're out running to cultivate really really good strength and again from my perspective um, the strength that most runners really need that aren't doing and the cool thing about this strength this is something that we can do while we're out for our run I'm going out for an eight mile run today. I've got four by five minutes at threshold. I tend to use wattage a little bit more in the winter because that is not affected by the cooler temperatures like heart rate is and speed. Um, today it's uh, 12 degrees, which it's a beautiful day. It's nice and sunny, which I love, um, but it's been actually unseasonably warm so I'm just not used to 12 degrees normally this time of year 12 degrees would feel really really nice but it just feels a little cold my body's not used to it yet so it's gonna be great once I get going and we'll take you along the Snake River today Well, it's cold in the shade, still warming up, but let's talk about what makes an elite runner an elite runner. This is gonna sound like a broken record. I'm always talking about leg stiffness, but this is really what separates elites from kind of an amateur runner. Good leg stiffness is the ability to land and get off your leg quickly without a whole lot of ankle and knee flexion. I get asked all the time why leg stiffness is so important. Here's why. When we land, we want our leg angle to stop right about here and then spring off forward. And that's where good leg stiffness comes into play. Leg stiffness is your ability to quickly transfer from the landing at that angle to springing forward. If you have poor leg stiffness, you're going to land and the leg's going to decompress that spring before you can spring forward. And that just decreases our cadence and increases our ground contact time, allowing for a lot of dysfunction to take place. So having elite strength is our ability to absorb the landing well and get off our leg quickly. So this creates the need for a lot of emphasis on our landing or what is called the eccentric part of our running cycle. Our landing is eccentric and then there's a moment in time that's isometric before we take off that's concentric. And a lot of Weight training regimens focus mainly on the concentric or the taking off. And this is where I want to maybe open your mind a little bit to some eccentric training that's going to really develop great leg stiffness that's going to take your strength to a new level. This will not only help injury prevention, but help your performance to skyrocket, especially if you kind of hit a plateau or have been doing the same thing all the time. Well, I just secured airline and Airbnb for two weeks in New Zealand. Gonna race Tarawira and doing a, a run clinic with my buddy, Zach Friedley. So looking forward to it and time to crank up the training. So let's get back to leg stiffness for a minute. 
let's use the example of your vehicle. Having good leg stiffness is the same thing as having a good suspension system in your vehicle. If your shocks are shot, you're gonna feel every bump and you might even bottom out where having a new suspension system allows the ride to be just really nice. That's leg stiffness. So now let's use another example of traditional weight training in the gym. It hasn't snowed in quite a while, but when it does snow here in Jackson Hole, the typical type of snow we get is very, very fine, very, very dry, and very, very light. The snowflakes tend to be very, very small, but there's lots of them. This is kind of like the champagne powder that you may hear of, where if I'm shoveling, it's easy to shovel. I can shovel it all day because it's nice and light and airy, very dry, no humidity. Unlike maybe back east where I'm from, where there's more humidity in the air, there's more water in the snow that creates a more dense snow, more packable, it's heavier. If you're having to shovel it, now you're really having to work pacing yourself is just so much harder to move because of all the water and density to the snow. And that's not unlike what happens to our muscles when we do heavy weightlifting. Heavy weightlifting creates larger muscle fibers, more dense, larger. Therefore, the energy cost or the metabolic cost to move these bigger, larger muscles is higher. We become less efficient because it's harder to move these type of muscles when we're running. So that's the difference between heavy weight lifting in the gym, traditional heavy weight lifting, and what we're talking about today of increasing your focus on eccentric and isometric type of strength or similar to jump training. I hate to use the word plyometrics because I think that just is um, too broad of a topic or too broad of a category and focus. If we see it as jump training with the eccentric as the main focus, we can really work from this. And again, it's something that's fun and something that you can do throughout your run. So now you're achieving a lot of potent strength while you're out running. You're not having to spend added time in the gym. You may have heard how important running cadence is for running, for run health, for performance. Well, cadence is a product of good leg stiffness. So this eccentric and isometric focus is really helping you con to control your movement, helping you to utilize your strength better, control and stabilize with your muscles better. And this is why it's so, so potent and what the majority of amateur runners are missing in their training or for that matter, in their ability to improve whether it's injury prevention or performance. They both go hand in hand. Okay, it's not one or the other. So I've got to get into my main set, four by five. I'm going to leave it here, but what I'm going to do is show you some of my library of isometric and eccentric jump training that you can do while you're out on your run. So over and out from Henry's Road, Jackson Hole and Born to Run World. Hope that helps you guys. Okay, this first one's simple but complex. We're simply running in place fairly fast with knees out in front of you and then pausing on one leg. Here we go, slow motion. So the idea, nice quick feet and then pause and hold and try to stick your balance. The key is to try to hold your balance without letting your body fall out of balance. So you'll know as you get better through time, make it nice and fast and stick it. Nice and fast, stick it without losing your balance. That pause is important. Really stick it without losing your balance. And again, 
get faster and faster through time and, and that's how you know you're going to get better. This next one, we're just simply hopping or jumping forward with a little bit of height so we can have a little bit of a landing as well. So you want to go hop forward or jump forward with some height. The key here is we're not squatting. We're keeping our legs as stiff as possible and making them as quick as possible. Land and transition to jumping forward as quickly as you can. Use your arms like I am. This is a great core workout as well, but the key is we're not squatting. Notice how there's hardly any flex in my legs. We want kind of a natural run range of motion with our legs. And that's the problem with a lot of squatting exercises that they don't make mimic running. So again, here's slow motion. Notice how my legs stay relatively straight and there's just a slight bend at the knee as I hop or jump forward. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but that's key with all of these. We want to make them as quick as possible. Quick, get off the ground. That's what we're training. So that's where a little height comes in, where you're landing from the height, creating that eccentric work, and hopping forward. So again, we don't want a full squat. This is not a squat jump or a squat um, range of motion. Very short, very quick. As quick as you can. Get better through time. And here comes fast motion again. So kind of get some momentum. You can notice how I kind of get better as I go. It takes a little bit of momentum to get going. But again, a great core. Use your arms. They're important with running. They help you get momentum. Great core workout as well. One more time, just nice and quick. Hardly any bend in the knee. Okay, this next one is just a variation off the last one. We're still doing that hop or jump forward, both legs but we're, we're adding a little bit of a pause. Right there is that isometric hold that we talked about. And that's why this exercise is really good, is we want to get a little bit of a pause before we jump forward. Here's slow motion, so I jump forward, land and pause, stick it. The key is to be as rigid as there as you can. Be really stiff with your legs, stick it. Just like a gymnast, stick it without any movement. Try not to land and get movement down and bending the legs into more of a squat. So stick it and be as sturdy as you can. Be as stiff as you can. It creates a better rubber band. Stick it. Stick it. No movement. No movement right there. Again, and going fast forward again. A little bit of a pause. Just a pause. Minimize any type of movement as you can. Okay, here are shoulder mar soldier marches, <laughs> hard to say, but with the key here is we want them as quick as possible, as powerful as possible, but with a stiff leg, okay? So I'm keeping my legs straight, and I'm keeping the, the, the legs as stiff as possible so I can make my transition to the next step as quick as possible. Stiffness in the leg creates better speed, better power, more force, all the good stuff that we want to help us become better, faster, stronger, running well. I want you to realize how well you feel after doing a workout like this. Notice how all the little kinks maybe have been taken away, all the little aches and pains. So again, notice a nice stiff leg, nice and straight, sequencing my arms. And again, we're, the key is we're trying to make the transition from landing the taking off as quick as possible. That's the isometric training that we're doing right now. Slap the ground and be as stiff as possible. Sequence those arms. And here's one more going fast again. Get nice and quick. One thing that'll help you to keep your or to able to get your legs quicker, think about moving your arms quicker. Your arms mi mirror your legs. And if you move your arms quicker, your legs will probably follow. Here we're in kind of a split squat position. And I'm jumping up and landing on the opposite side. Again, notice now with this one, I'm pausing. I'm jumping up, pause, and kind of sticking my balance. Okay, and again, 
We're not looking to get tons of range of motion here. Nice and controlled. Maintain your balance. Here's slow motion. So up to the other side, I pause. That's the isometric training that we're getting. Okay, pause enough to have to force yourself to balance and just like a one, two, three count and then back to the other side. Up, up and over, stick it. Again, just like a, just like a, um, a dancer or a gymnast. Here we go again, I'm sticking it, nice and controlled. We don't want to make this a circuit where we're not getting a lot of rest in between each exercise. Get enough rest after each one of these drills so you're able to perform. Doing circuits for time is just not the way to go. We want to be able to perform. Okay, same, same position, but now we're scissoring back and forth with no pause. And again, nice rigid leg, very stiff with the leg, and I'm trying to move as fast as I can back and forth, reducing my contact time. So again, you can see there's not a whole lot of range of motion with each front leg. Okay, we're not, we're not going down into a lunge position, which we'll show in a minute. Okay, I'm just making them nice and quick making that transition from one leg to the other as quick as possible. That's what we're training. Again, we're training ground contact time. We don't want to spend a lot of time on the ground. So make them as quick as you can. Here's what we don't want. Okay, we don't want this big range of motion. See the difference there? This is kind of a normal split squat or a lunge type of thing. We don't want that huge range of motion into the deep squat, okay? That's not running functional. We never get that much range of motion when we're running. And that just adds to your ground contact time, which we're wanting to avoid. So that's why we want them nice and quick, not a lot of flexion. In now we're just taking the scissors motion, same thing as before, and just moving forward making it nice and quick, sequencing my arms, that's important, and just kind of moving forward as you're scissoring the legs back and forth. So nice quick feet. Again, with the slow motion, you can see how I'm keeping my legs nice and stiff with not a ton of range of motion, okay? That's where we are when we're running, right there. That's, that's, that's the part that we need to train to become stronger, quicker, Reducing our ground contact time, increasing our cadence, increasing our strength, increasing our speed. It all goes into the package of how we want to be as runners. One more, nice and quick. Again, you don't want to go so quick that you're throwing yourself off balance. Through mastery, you just get better through time. You're not going to be good at this right from the beginning. Okay, now we're progressing to one leg. You can see how all this is a kind of a progression. Now I'm just staying, balancing on one leg, same range of motion. I'm hopping up and sticking it. Stick it, down, hop up, stick it. Stick it. Again, notice I'm trying to stick it with not any movement while I'm holding that pause. That's the key. Hold it and stick it. Here's slow motion, boom, stick it, no movement. You don't want to get an up and down movement. As you stick it, there, right there. There's hardly any movement there. We want to make that right there, no deeper. Jump up and stick it. Jump up and stick it. The key is to get better through time so you don't throw yourself off balance. The balance here is the key. To be able to stick that leg without throwing yourself off balance and being stable is the holy grail for running. Because right now, all I am is running right now. This is what we're asking our body to do as we run, to stick it, okay? And we're just, we're just holding it now to really train that ground, ground contact time. And now we're just simply progressing to we're hopping forward with the stick. So again, I want to stick it in that same range of motion with that leg. Land and stick. Land it, kind of hold it as long as you can no, to, to be able to know you have your balance. I'm sticking it, knowing I have my balance before I take off again. Stick it, get my balance, there I know I have my balance. 
get through better through time. Again, take off, land, hardly any movement. Again, try to minimize any movement. That's why it's important to stick it long enough so you know you have your balance. And take off. And this is where the shoes come in. You know, I challenge you, put, put some really cushioned shoes on and try to do this. And notice how more difficult it is in a bad way. Sometimes creating more challenge is good, but not with the cushioned shoes here. Because now you're just going to absorb all that energy through the cushion of the shoe and the outsole and the midsole of the shoe. So feeling the ground there and being stiff, feeling your balance is really important. Sticking it, take off, stick. Good. And again, through time, you just want to minimize how much movement is while you're sticking that and holding that movement or holding that pause. So notice right here, that's my range of motion. That's the greatest range of motion I get while I'm running. And that mimics all our drills versus doing deep squats. Okay, All these drills are very functional because we're not getting that great range of motion as we run.